Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marvel Bishop, and you're now listening and watching the No Way But Up podcast. Appreciate everybody for listening, for watching the YouTube viewership, the SoundCloud viewership, um, Spotify, iTunes, pretty soon. Uh, who else? Who else do I want to need to shout out? Um, all the entrepreneurs, all the go-getters, all the men, all the women, everybody here is just pretty much just out here just getting it. Uh, love you guys. As I always say, today is a special day. But today, you know, it, it is always a special day. Every day, um, I have. Excuse me. Can I can I introduce you first before you say something? I didn't say anything. Yeah, you, you kind of did. I don't know. But anyways, I I'll let you do your thing. Go ahead, friend. So, um, I have a very, very, very special individual in the house right now. She has been in, I believe, numerous of my podcasts, but we've never really done a podcast to really get to know her as an individual, okay. as a queen, as a businesswoman, as just all of the above. Miss Alicia McIntosh. What's up, girl? How you doing? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing well. I really appreciate you coming through and actually having a lot of patience. Um, because you know, you are a, a woman of patience. Sometimes. Well, maybe all the time. Most of the time. Most of the times, right? 97% but I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you having patience with me earlier. I know we're kind of like, you know, running back, but I definitely appreciate you coming through. Um, you know, you I consider you one of my best friends, yeah. like but one of my best like women friends, honestly. Absolutely. I agree. Um and I wasn't really expecting us to get that close. For everybody that knows or does know us, whatever, we are not together. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> I need I need to put this to public this PSA. No, we are no, not no. together. We are great friends. Men and women can have play, plutonic, platonic, platonic, platonic relationships. relationships without any type of intimacy that you got to think of. It's this, intimacy this in different ways. Well, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, not physical intimacy, uh -huh. but mental intimacy. Yeah, exactly. We so if everybody thinks that we're together, we're not together. We're just you know, we're cool. We're yeah, we help stimulate each other's minds. Yes, mind. mentally. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, now the reason why I brought it up is because of the lab podcast and yeah. the conversations. <laughs> there was a <laughs> lot of people saying, "Hey, y'all." together I'm like no nigga like we're like, <laughs> like no we not but um listen appreciate you for coming through as always um how do we meet Ooh, i think <laughs> the other walking icebreaker it's bay okay we met uh Really? Was it through Jesse? No, it was through um, Natalia. It's, yeah. Oh, Natalia. shit. Yeah, she shout out to Bay. Birth hey, beautiful soul. Yes. Um, She had a birthday brunch. What is it? Two and a half, three years ago? About two. Yo, we've known each other for that long. I think, yeah. I'm pretty sure about two I years. I think we met each other through her, but then through Jesse Wong, we've that's when we yeah, really connected, I think. Exactly. And that, yeah, I think that's pretty much what happened. And after. And I then, don't really remember. It oh was God. actually. Life goes so fast. I don't remember remember the exact exact way how everything like but i think everything does happen for a reason even though you can't really like explain it right no yeah definitely but now yeah. we're here now we're here I moved to the area um i'm a trainer in the area we'll get into that where, in where were you bit. before um i live south uh -huh. yeah i always worked in the area but when i like moved here i just kind of, i'm always in the area so i got you like yeah equinox stuff like that okay so yeah so i don't even well, I don't know if you can say Equinox, but whatever. But um, so EQX. I know you, <laughs> e EQX. <laughs> but um, I know you as Alicia, and I'm actually really proud of myself because now I'm actually pronouncing your name Alicia, right. Alicia, yes. Alicia. There's always a great debate. How do you say your name? <laughs> but after all these years, you didn't correct me. You talking half of my friends. <laughs> that was like, you I, my other friend friends? the other day was like, "Wait, it's Alicia." I yeah. thought it was Alicia this whole time. And then Jessica's mom was like, I told you. Yeah, no, nah, no. <laughs> it's always a debate. But it's, I go by Allie. You don't call me Allie, but a lot of people call me Allie, mm -hmm. Coach Allie. Yeah. Um, my real name's Alicia, not Alicia. My mom thought of it. Do you have I'm a middle not name? Hispanic. I am of Jamaican descent, huh? Do you have a middle name? Anne Marie. Anne Marie. Alicia Anne Marie McIntosh. Oh, wait a yeah. minute. Okay. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. So. It's funny because it's like, why am I having this podcast? Cause I know a little bit. I know everything about you. Yeah, honestly, you right? Right, I, yeah. I pretty much do. But the audience doesn't. But um, let's go back to yeah, let's just get to the nitty gritty before the training, before Ooh. the entrepreneur woman that you are right now. Like, where did that all stem from? I actually would love to uh, thank my brother. 
and my family. I have a beautiful family, mm-hmm. very hardworking individuals. My mother is a beast. Um, she raised four kids pretty much on her own. Um, but honestly, I just, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I was just like, I'm going to just start my own business. Like, I never really thought of that. I just thought of like always living through my passion. And the older I became, I realized that, you know, obviously to turn your passion into dollar signs mm-hmm. and to make a living through it, there is a definite way of going about it. But my brother is a beast, a financial beast. And, my sister. I just have a really great background of siblings. I'm the youngest of four on my mom's side who are just really hardworking individuals. And But my brother, you know, he owned multiple different businesses. And, you know, he just always was like, you're, you know, you're the most like me. I didn't tap into that mm-hmm. until later. You know, I had to go through my own transformation and life process for me to, and still am, to own that spirit. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, just a lot of trial and error, trying things that work, that didn't work, still trying things that work but don't work but one thing that remains the same right now is my love for the fitness industry and helping individuals be their best so, so. talk to me about the transformation that you've been going through like Ooh, well, let's deep know. dive you know, yeah, I, you know i don't play know. i don't play now i know um man the transformations you know as a fitness coach as a health coach um it is my duty to stimulate my mind in the most optimal way so i i'm always seeking knowledge and it's not just it's a lot of spiritual knowledge but Mm -hmm. knowledge in the sense of healing um awareness more than knowledge or both however you want to say it so it's one in the same really one in the same yeah Yeah. so it's knowledge right um self-awareness and consciousness with myself and it's it's how i guide and train my clients but you know you can't guide and lean lead and train if you aren't doing a lot of Mm self-work so i mean i'm still and probably forever will be on this journey of you know just going back and we're always a constant project to ourselves honestly you know there's never a uh a one size fits all or like, you know, there's never a, uh, a a time where it's like, okay, you know, we had this result and that's it. Oh, never, you know? never. Because then there's a next transition. There's a next phase into the next step. Right. Mm-hmm. So pretty much what I've been really diving as we've talked about uh, deep into is a lot of like work and work within. Mm-hmm. And I've always done that. I've always been that person. It's funny. One of my great girlfriends, Sarah Rose, how are you? Um, reminded me of that. She's like, friend, you've always been this person. You've maybe like now, like it's called something like, you know, I wasn't yeah. hip to yeah, the yeah. names of things, but I've always tried to seek a deeper reasoning behind what I do myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how I live my life. I definitely want to live it in the best way possible. And just, you know, reading a lot of books I've, you know, some of my favorite books, like The Untethered Soul, The Power of Now. Which I'm going um, to read. Okay. Yes. I'm going to um, <laughs> And those are just gateway books to understanding the mind and things like that. But I just decided to do that honestly because, you know, I am r- real. And the more I dug into my clients, the more I realized, man, like I have some deep rooted things that allows me to react instead of respond. Mm-hmm. Um, so not how, so great. So how how... How is that helping you out as like, far as business-wise, as far as clients-wise? Like really putting yourself first before anything. Because it's, for me- um, It's a great question. I, I was uh, at a point in my life where I was- Well, first of all, you know how fucking crazy I am. <laughs> like, you know- He always calls me his voice of reason. Yes, the voice of reason. You and many real. other people. Yeah, Lord. yeah, absolutely. This is how you are, like beautiful soul. But oh, like, um, I was a person that I was like really putting my businesses first before anything. I was just not really taking care of myself. I was like really, really, I mean, I guess because of my body frame, I'm always going to be kind of overweight, but I was definitely like, you know, carrying a lot of like baggage, you know, mentally, emotionally, you know, and physically. And then now, you know, I really feel like in the last five months I have reverted into this brand new being. And I love the simple fact that you're actually are the one of the ones that always reminded me of that. So I really appreciate you when it (laughs) comes to that. So, yeah. So my question is that like, like, how is that helping my business? Yes, how is that helping your business? How is that helping your clients Man. when you put yourself first? And what advice you pretty much give that to other people who want to do that? I Okay, so I deal with many beautiful souls as far as my clients go. And I mean, I train all types of people. So mm-hmm. s- some, like you used to be, who didn't put themselves first. So I, the people think of the term being selfish and 
like a wrong light. And for me, being selfish, mm-hmm. right, as far as putting myself first and doing the inner work that I needed to do in mm-hmm. order to be the best coach I can be is allowing me to pour into my clients in the best way because I'm giving them the best of me. Okay. And that's not just with my clients. That is of someone I'm dating, my friendships. Yeah, like you're absolutely. getting the yeah. best parts of me because I'm doing that constant conscious work of really diving deep and whatever's coming to the surface. I'm like, all right. Like I try not to attach, you know, still working on a lot of that, but every idea to something, but it's just realizing and being okay with like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. This comes up and it allows me to really like ask my clients the right questions, you know, connect the dots. I always say plant the seeds and allow people to connect their dots because Mm -hmm. we all go through different journeys. So, I mean, as far as my coaching style, it's Mm -hmm. just helped me really like own what I am here for and be very comfortable and very humble about it. And I'm 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 guided through a higher source, you know, and I'm mm-hmm. really grateful for that. So the more I continue to, to do the inner work yeah. and put myself first, I mean, everyone in my life, not just my clients, are receiving the best parts of me. I think I think a lot of people are actually like very afraid to really do the inner work. For Ooh, themselves. and and you know, I had, had a very great statement. I had a person the other day say something to me, and they were a little frustrated with someone, and I was mm-hmm. like, look. We can't tell anyone how to live their lives. Mm. We have friends. We have people in our lives. And I'm not saying you need to hold on to friendships or relationships that are no longer serving you or serving you. But you know a good human. And people have to connect their own dots. So if you're along for the ride, be along for the ride and help them and guide them if that's something you want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Inner work, it's not... I don't want to say it's easy because there takes a level of knowing that you need, well, everybody has some level of, you know, work to do on themselves. Everybody, if you're of the flesh, if you're human, we do. Yeah. Um, it's confronting those it's it's like being really real and you got to be really raw with yourself. And a lot of people aren't ready for that reality. Mm -hmm. Um, I decided maybe honestly, like about two years ago and I've life, you know, things happen which which made me be like, look, and then I just dive even deeper into like, you got to be raw with yourself. Mm-hmm. You got to be real. This is what you do. And I didn't maybe know the reasoning behind everything. And that is, you know, another level of work, but I had to just be own it. And a lot of people aren't ready for that ownership just yet because it takes, it takes a lot when th- you have to carry that. I, I think um, people who hesitate with really working on themselves are not, necessarily worried about what they will maybe negatively find but what they can become like how successful they that can could be, be it too. you know um it could be both it could be all it could, yeah i mean it could for, be a lot of things for me honestly sometimes I, I it's not the simple fact that i'm worried about failing and worried about like really progressing when i really work on myself like at first i was like damn like i can really be like this this next level being and i'm like and Mm -hmm. that comes with like with success comes responsibility and i'm like sometimes i'm like oh man do i even want that Mm. you know or if i'm even ready for that everybody wants success. i don't know everybody said that they want success right but let's get into it like do people really really want success because success i mean more money more problems more success you know how i feel about those type of wordings (laughs) okay i will we'll talk about well we'll talk about um staple like I don't like the box of okay. more money, more problems. It depends who you are as an individual, your mindset and how you utilize and your intention behind everything that you do. So mm-hmm. more money, maybe can help more people. True. So not more mo- so money, more problems. It looking- is the way and your perception of how you view your reality, mm-hmm. right? So I don't think of more money, more problems. I don't think that people um, don't think that. There comes in a, I, for success, everyone has a level of success. Some Mm -hmm. people um, may make 40 grand a year, have a wife and a house and cars paid off or not paid off and they have kids and that's their level of success. So we have to remember that we all view success very differently. And um, it's actually one thing that my brother and I, my brother, and it's funny, my siblings, this is how I know. I mean, everybody has trauma, but we're kind of working on our own past events. And uh, that is one thing he said to me the other day, man, like you've always been, and my mom said this, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like you've always been this girl, like, and he's getting to understand um, he's very successful. 
but he's getting to understand the, the, the connection behind success, not just this. Success is everything that we feel is successful. So like, it's cool to see him connect the dots. And the reason that I bring that up is because he was very unfulfilled and I bring you up, love your brother, but very unfulfilled, but fulfilled in mm-hmm. some parts of his life. And that's a mastery in one area. And is how can we be well-rounded? Like what we have to ask ourselves, like more money do I feel successful? Am yeah. I happier? And I'm not saying that you won't be because there's yeah. some people who definitely have will understand like, okay, yeah, more money and I get to do this and this and this. And I'm just kind of just talking about one area, just like money, but, or this evolving the podcast. Like it could be anything. It's just how you view it. The, if the, that makes sense. The examples that you just gave with your brother about him being successful, but maybe just kind of like having unfulfilled, I guess, spots. areas. Yeah. The, 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 did that inspire you to really work on the things that you needed to work on self care wise? My my mom, my brother, my family. Um, so just to give people a little backstory, um, my family has had a little bit of trauma. One of the biggest traumatic experiences that I felt like I've gone through as a young teenager when I was seventeen. Um, my dad and I we had a okay connection like I lived with him for a period of time in Mm -hmm. my life my mom and him were separated but he was murdered in Jamaica and oh wow yeah and I think ever since then I I mean I fell into a crazy depression Mm -hmm. I come from an island household so we didn't really talk about like we didn't really know like those type of things like depression and da 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 and uh, I think then is when I wanted to start figuring out like a little bit after like, I didn't like those type of emotions. And I couldn't really pinpoint it. I, I went to see a therapist um, prior to that happening just because I kind of always felt in and out of depression. I think my mom seen that. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't know what it was just because of other things that were going on. And when that happened, it kind of just snowballed, like, not so good. And I just remember, like, even younger than that, always seeking prayer. I, I looked for prayer and into prayer before I really understood what prayer was at like eight years old, really mm-hmm. and truly. I spoke to a higher power and I was just brought there to do so. And then like after that happened, I would say like just when I was 17, really it sparked my interest in inner work. I didn't know what it was called. I didn't know, you know, all this, yeah. the terms, but I really wanted to understand like a lot about myself and the way that I viewed life and Things happened. Things kept happening. Good and not so good. That Mm -hmm. helped me become the person that I am. And I mean, I and I honestly say I think I was always meant to be a coach or of a person of some type of leadership helping people because I definitely align with clients and people that just have a lot of deep things. And a lot of people do, honestly, but really deep things that I help power them through. Mm -hmm. You know, so and um in the fitness industry that you're in, how 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 what well, you just pretty much kind of like harped on just a little bit like how important is the spiritual and mental pretty much you know that is supposed to be pretty much be aligned with the physical cuz a lot of people when they think about fitness coaches and health coaches mm-hmm. they only think about the physical mm-hmm. but um with you, you know, the one thing I actually really, really love about you is that I don't just think about fitness when it comes to you. Mm-hmm. I think about, like, honestly, the whole entire well-being, mm-hmm. you know, every single aspect, so, mm-hmm. you know, mental, intellectual, emotional, physical. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. How, 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 like, for people who do not really know about the fitness industry, like, how important is that to pretty much have everything to encompass when you are taking care of clients. It's not just about the physical, but it's about everything else. I'll tell you something beautiful. All my clients, if you read the reviews, it's actually something that through time, like I remember one day I was going through all the reviews and not a lot of my girls or men know each other. And Mm. there was a constant rhythm in the reviews, like mental, spiritual, personal development. And Hmm. it's crazy I mean, I knew that I was doing that without really realizing the power. Yeah. And then I started diving a little bit more into it. It's extremely important. It's how we lead our lives. Like if I get someone and we're just working on their physical state, right? And we don't connect any dots on with the reasoning behind why they want to do what they want to do, the intentions, the purpose. And we leave everything out. And there's no real inner work being done. 
I have people, and I see it all the time, people attain these cool goals, whether we talk about success, but uh-huh. let's talk about the physical. They they get to a physical point, and I've been there, a physical um, place of accomplishing something and still feel very empty. Uh. And they don't feel good. And they're wondering, because they always they, they connect being a certain way with feeling a certain way. And that is not one and the same, uh-huh. right? So you can connect being at a financial standpoint with feeling a way. Like, it's not to say don't have goals or da-da-da, but it's extremely important to work on self because it's much bigger than just the physical standpoint uh-huh. or just the physical being, right? And I see it all the time I see with myself. So we work on the deeper rooted things. I don't like to say issues, things that may be arising. Why don't you like to say issue, uh, issues? I don't know. I just don't like the word issues. You're semantics, man. Like, I, I like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're, you know you're me not, with verbiage. Yeah, 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 I'm really yeah, weird yeah, with yeah. it. Because like, words are powerful. I was going to say the words power of the tongue. Words are very, very powerful. The tongue can be a tongue of gold, but it can be lethal at the same it's time. life or death. We create mm-hmm. life with our, you know, with the words that we say. And But really and truly, it's like, okay, so what is... What's the deeper reason? And sometimes people don't know. It's not like I hammer people right away uh, yeah. when they come see me, but yeah, they start yeah. realizing like, oh, well, wait, yeah, I, there is a, a, a bigger reason behind mm-hmm. all of this. And they start connecting the dots themselves. They have to connect the dots. I can tell someone what I think it is, which I, yeah. I don't, but they have to start really, I ask certain questions to help them guide them to their answers and sometimes that i have people i have a i had a client who messaged me the other day a year and a half later who's like oh my god ali light bulb she wrote me like something extremely personal like connecting the dots Uh in her journey right um and that's beautiful when i see things like that because it's it's yes it's physical but you start realizing like movement and just the mind and doing things for yourself when you feel optimal you operate at a certain level and with life like you know like movement it isn't just like just training just, like uh-huh. it's so much more like than just looking good or pushing a bunch of weights around so one of the things uh we can definitely uh i guess we definitely do have in common is that we love helping people uh, yeah, <laughs> like that's a some sad, I, I, it's sad you know even though you're kind of on the on, <laughs> on the capricorn side you know this is full sad over I'm here a whole baby you power know what I mean? over <laughs> here <laughs> But um, but yeah. Iron earth. Um, I want to I want to talk about not just really not just helping people because I mean you know we kind of we went on that and people kind of know how to help people but how to let go. Ooh. How to let go of clients when you are helping them way too much or maybe not even that but maybe they're just not really accepting and really just this is beautiful why i just had some things go down in my life where so i always say we're constantly asking the universe your god the source whatever you mm-hmm. want to call it for mm-hmm. something verbally or not verbally i'm in prayer a lot so i ask for a lot of things but I believe my higher source knows the inner working of me. Mm-hmm. So I allowed mm-hmm. some individuals through just really deep connection. And I knew what they needed to kind of just let them fly a little bit. I have people who I let fly and they come back because they need to connect some dots or figure out some things themselves before, you know, coming back to me. And maybe they'll never come. The intention is not for to be, Oh my God, come back to me. Mm-hmm. But as far as knowing when to let go, I, I sometimes I really don't even know how to verbalize that, but it's just yeah. like it's happening right now, and oh, I wow. yeah, it's literally happening right now, and it's because I know that I'm asking for something, and mm. I want more for them, and if I'm not of the like the source that they need, which I mean I carry people to a really great state, but we get to doing some real deep work that sometimes they're like, okay, well, <laughs> so I yeah, need a therapist, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 if that makes sense, or mm-hmm. they're like. You know, and some are, you know, lessening sessions and starting sessions with like a a spiritual coach, which Mm -hmm. one day I will, you know, be. But um, of course, in a sense, I am. But you kind of are right now. Yeah, true. 
Very true. But <laughs> yeah. so like as far as letting go, like I let I like to let people spread their wings and then come back. And if they don't come back, then cool. But letting go, I don't I kind of really just don't know how to even put that into words. Like I don't kick anybody out of here. I just uh-huh. think that I think it's a natural process that actually happens. So so maybe since it's a natural process, we're the ones that actually do fight it from not happening. What do you say? I'm sorry. Like like we like even though it's a natural process, like we are the ones that are basically trying to not let it happen. Yes. So, and the reason I say like this has been happening and I've been asking my creator for certain things because I know I'm built for certain things. So it's just like, you'll see it very soon. You're seeing it already. Uh-huh. Um, being a spiritual teacher, yeah. right? a coach. Yeah. Um, and ascending to that next level, I have to let go of what's going on now. And they've gotten a lot from me, right? Um, but there's other people who need me in different spaces Mm -hmm. so like letting go like i no longer and i do my best because i realized i was doing this the other day like i get a level of like oh my god i don't know if i'm done with the work and i really i got this message the other day was that was that pretty much said to me no you've done enough work let me carry Mm -hmm. them the source Mm -hmm. to the next Mm -hmm. transition their next phase right so you can keep working yeah so i'm I don't know if that answers the question. I, I, <laughs> Letting go, just let go. Just let go. I know that sounds so complex or so simple, but just letting go, it's beautiful because when you know you don't have to play tug of war with mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. You don't. We play tug of war and we make our lives way more complex than it needs to be. But you know, be intentional. Understand like what you're you're asking for. You know. And just let go. That that is not just you know, kind. That's with everything. Letting go uh, really takes a lot of strength. It does. It takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of willpower. You know why? It takes a lot of faith. It takes a lot of faith. Um, where do you like? Who do you get your strength from? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, the highest source, and that's God, or the universe, or whatever you want to call it. That is the unphysical. Okay. Physical. Definitely my mom. Mm-hmm. Someone like my mom. Um, I was doing this 21 day abundance that I failed miserably at, but it's, it's okay. okay. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> we'll get work you on it. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. By Deepak. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, this is the continuous work that I'm talking about. And I realized, although I feel like she taught me so many beautiful things, she also, you know, people teach you with the good and the bad mm-hmm. if you know how to leverage that or the good and the negative, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom's way of being definitely taught me so much about being strong, being resilient, just not stopping no matter what. And um, I mean, I, I lead very differently. I live very differently mm-hmm. as far as the way that I think. She also taught me through not so good things how I wanted to be as well as a woman mm. and how I wanted to lead my life in more consciousness and not just have life happen to me and to create more than I just am, you know, I mm-hmm. just am, but you no, know, not letting <laughs> life just, yeah. 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 The, um, people really hate pain, honestly. Um, but Ooh, pain let's talk about that. and just discomfort and mm. the things that you go through and the things that happen to you through the people that you, that love you and you love pretty much really makes the person like pretty much who you are. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's a thing about pain. The pain triggers a response in all of us, mm-hmm. right? How we re- how we respond is up to us, mm-hmm. right? Um, some people, you know, have like my response to pain is to understand where it comes from, right? To look at it in the face and. You know, like not, I don't force the working. I allow it to be like, I journal a lot. Um, I'm a, I'm a dreamer. So a lot of things come to me in my, my dreams, but that's another thing. Like, I just understand that pain has also allowed me to ask certain questions. Mm -hmm. I just told you like with my dad passing, like I was like, whoa, okay. Ooh, a lot of stuff was going on. That stuff was going on for years after. And still some of that stuff was arising. And I was like, okay, what, what is this? Because it keeps coming back to the surface and you could think you've worked on something by just throwing it under the rug. That is not working. You Mm got to go through it to, um, 
to really get to the understanding of it. But I think people just want answers now and everything now and not feel, not wanting to feel pain is just like, I get it. Like who wants to be in discomfort? But that's, but like, discomfort. Ask, that's like asking not, go, not to go through life though. Exactly. <laughs> that's the process. <laughs> like, you know what I'm that's, saying? You, like take you might as well die now. It's simple. Like, I know it sounds like, <laughs> who says that you got to take the good with the bad? Like Carrie Hilson. Carrie yeah. Hilson, uh-huh. uh-huh. Hilson, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's honestly like, it's a lot of this stuff is simple in reality, but it's not so simple. Mm-hmm. It's like we're busy sometimes. People, humans are busy trying to fight the natural process of life. And all of that is allowing us to evolve. So there's yeah. no fighting it. True. I think um, I think I covered everything. Yeah. That 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 because we can talk for um, hours. Yeah, we definitely can talk for hours. <laughs> but, but 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 more on the coaching <laughs> side. <laughs> yeah, more on the coaching side and everything. Yeah, I that's think. just yeah. As far as coaching, that's what I do. There's it's a lot of that stuff. You know, I'm fun. I'm light. Um, I love my girls and my guys that I mm-hmm. work with. We make training fun. I know the fitness industry in Miami is sometimes can be very. Um, what so, so to wrap up, to, I have a question for you. Oh, for sure. So, um, like, as a seasoned veteran, when it comes to like you know, the fitness industry, industry and everything, did like, you say seasoned? Seasoned, yeah, seasoned veteran. What? I feel like I just got salt and pepper on me and that body. Oh, okay. I'm talking <laughs> shit, Queen. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you just no, I'm getting just started. I you just know what I mean? I just get it started. I'm <laughs> okay, learning course, so course. much. But, but you are experienced. <laughs> yes. You yes, know exactly pretty much what you're doing. And a person that wants to get in the industry or who is pretty much new. Oh, I like that. Yes, this is it. I would feel that they should really, really talk to you. So, in a nutshell, give me the cliff notes. What advice would you give? He's them? like, Ali, you talk to me too much. Give me the cliff notes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're too much. Cliff notes. Okay, I'm just thinking. Go ahead. What would I have wanted to hear? Go through the process. Mm. Be confident about what you know how to do. Mm-hmm. Always be willing and open to learning. Because you're always going to be learning in any industry you're in. And own who you are. The reason that it takes so much self-work to lead something like coaching is because you definitely have to have... Some people have it. They got it. They were born with it. That factor of just owning themselves. Some people have to work on it a little bit more. And that is something that I dealt with a lot in the beginning. So if I could tell anyone starting off in the health and fitness industry, guy, girl... Do what you love. Lead with passion. Um, people feel that more than being salesy. Mm-hmm. Um, really understand and keep connecting with why you're doing what you're doing. But one thing, don't stop. Like you're gonna find along. Like I found so much answers along the journey of kind of what my niche was. So I mean, honestly, if I could tell you one main thing, yeah, keep going. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't get. Di- I mean, you may get discouraged. Yeah. But just don't stop. What does no way but up mean to you? No matter what. <laughs> just always ascending. No way but up. That's it? Nice. That's it? Okay, cool. Why? Ascending <laughs> yeah. is always yeah. like the next transition, yeah. the next transition. What is meant? You know, like no way but up is, that's what I, that is for me. Just, you know, taking the process of life and going up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ali, I appreciate you, man. I, like I really do. You, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> um, so before you wrap up, before you leave, um, shameless plugs. Where can we find you? Um, any new things that's happening as far as like events? Anything? Please yes. go right ahead. Okay, shameless plug. You can find me on Instagram, um, Ali and Ali spelled A L I I A N N E underscore. Um, we have sweat vibe and exercise coming up November 30th at the hideout. So hopefully this will be out by then. Two days before my birthday. Yes. Um, (laughs) come show love, connect, network. There'll be a lot of great individuals there. Um, business owners, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just a great place to vibe and connect as well as getting your sweat on. Um, another event coming up. Ooh. I have, I'll, I'll shout out that okay. another time. Cool. I need cool. to figure out the details on that. But cool. Sweat Vibe and Exercise, find me on Insta and go through my highlights. Appreciate you, girl. Yes. Thank you for coming. I Appreciate it. All right, guys. As always, no way but up.